Hey, what's up? I'm Brandon Lee, and right now I'm going to do a video for you about 360 cameras. I'm using the Insta360 One RS One Inch 360 Edition, and we're going to be filming at night with this camera. And the reason that I'm using this camera in particular is because it has better low light performance than other 360 cameras of this size. So I'm here in Chinatown in Bangkok, which is an awesome, lively spot. There's so many lights and people and things going on. Lots of action to capture with the 360 camera, lots of opportunities for creative shots. We're going for more of a cinematic look and less of a vloggy look. For that reason, I'm not going to be using auto mode on this camera. We're going to go all manual and I'll walk you through the settings. First of all, the format I'm going to be shooting in is 6K, 24P. That's the way I always shoot my videos with this camera. That's the maximum quality and 24P is the cinematic frame rate. Also, the sharpness is set to low. I don't want any digital sharpening in my image. My ISO is set to 100 minimum because I want to make sure that I have the maximum dynamic range in my image. And as you raise that ISO, the image does get brighter, but you lose dynamic range in the highlights. The shutter is going to be 150th of a second. I'm not going to use a fast shutter because I want to get the maximum possible exposure for the image. And 150th is the proper shutter speed to use when you're shooting 24p. The white balance could be many things because there's a lot of different types of light around me, but I'm going to set my white balance to 5500K and that will match a lot of the colder lights a lot of the more blue lights around me. My color mode will be set to standard. I don't use log and I don't use vivid, always standard because that's the most natural looking color. Okay, those are my settings. Let's go ahead and try some shots. The first thing you got to look for when you're using a 360 camera at night is an area that has enough lighting for the camera. Because even though this camera is good in low light, it's still not going to be as good as a mirrorless camera with an APS-C or full frame sensor. So these guys are cooking with fire and I think that might be a good subject for the 360 cam because the fire is a light source. So it's definitely going to be bright enough, right? Because fire is bright. So what I'm going to do is open up the app and I can just look all around me and see how my scene is looking. It's pretty dark right near where I am, but... If I move my camera over the fire, yeah, that's looking bright enough. That's pretty cool. Let's try to do some shots. So remember, I set my shutter to 150th, which means that I'm shooting at the normal shutter speed for 24p shooting. When you're shooting 24p, you want your shutter to be 150th for most shooting, except when you're trying to stabilize it with an action camera. Action cameras and phones require a fast shutter speed for the best stabilization. So what that basically means is, I'm not gonna get the best stabilization from this camera with this shutter speed. And I don't wanna increase my shutter speed because it's dark. So what that means is I have to be steadier while I shoot. So I will do moves where I raise and lower the camera or where I go forward and backward like this but I won't do moves where I'm walking around like this because that will cause a lot more shake and that shake will show up as weird blur artifacts in the shot. So there are some really epic neon signs behind me, but they're pretty high up. And even with this extension rod, I won't be able to get up to them. So I have a few more goodies in my bag. I have this carbon fiber tube that I can just screw on here. And I have this little monopod that I can screw on to the tube, I'm going to be able to get a lot more reach. Safety note, if you're using a really long pole like this, not only do you want to generally just be aware of your environment so that you don't get hit by a car or something, you also want to look out for power lines and stay at least four, maybe five meters away from a power line. Like I did see some power lines here, but I made sure that I didn't bring the camera or the rod too close to them. Better yet, have a friend with you who's looking out on your behalf to make sure that you don't get in any trouble. I'm looking for a brightly colored vehicle, like a yellow taxi, because I'm gonna be looking down, which means there won't be as much light in the shot because I'm not gonna be focusing on the lights themselves, the neon lights, I'll be looking down on the street. So I need a subject that reflects a lot of light. And that means I need my subject to be yellow, white, something like that. Yellow taxi would be perfect. The 
huge long stick breaks down to these three small pieces. So easy to pack up and put away. Much easier than having a long monopod with a gimbal with a full frame camera. Now I'm gonna try using this little vice grip. So let's find something I can mount onto. So while the camera's rolling, I'm over here on my phone outside of the shot, previewing, making sure that I'm getting a good shot. So I don't even need to be next to the camera. So when I'm placing a 360 camera on a mounted surface, I usually try to put a little distance between the lens and the subject. If the camera's too close, then when I reframe the shot, it forces me to zoom way out, which can introduce a lot of distortion, which means the camera needs to be a little bit further back to give me that extra distance so that I can crop in a little bit and still keep my subject properly framed. I wanna put this somewhere on the tuk-tuk because I just think it'd be really cool to get a driving shot here, but I don't know if the shot will be smooth enough because the tuk-tuk, as it drives, it will have vibrations. The vibrations will transmit through the clamp to the camera and cause shake. You wouldn't really see those vibrations if I was using a fast shutter speed, but because it's dark, I have to use 1 50th, and as I explained before, that will translate into more visible vibrations in the stabilized shot. It will have some blur in it. So I wanna try this anyway. We'll see how it turns out. I want to teach you one more thing, and that's how to do a hyperlapse. I shoot my hyperlapses as normal speed, 24p video, just like all my other footage, because I want the option to be able to retime it however I want, and I can create the necessary motion blur in post. So I have my camera set up the same way it was set up for the other nighttime footage, and I'm about to go walk around this shopping mall here. Now the thing you want to keep in mind as you walk and shoot your hyperlapse is that you have to maintain a constant speed, otherwise, when you speed up everything, any variation in your walking speed will become exaggerated. And you'll see your footage suddenly speed up and slow down, speed up and slow down, and that looks really awkward. And then you might have to even keyframe your retiming speed to compensate for that, which gets really complicated and you want to avoid that if possible. So I'm gonna to try to walk at a constant speed. I'm gonna hold this out in front of me and try to keep it from waving up and down or waving around because that will look shaky in the final video. And otherwise, I'm just going to explore the shopping mall and try to get some cool shots.